Hello, YouTubers. Uh, this is Off Grid Amateur here. Uh, normally, I post stuff about my off grid way of life, but recently I've been hearing a lot about these um, these gig economy platforms like Amazon Flex, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and I signed up for a few of them and I tried out the uh, Amazon Flex. And I wanted to give you some of my impressions about uh, this whole platform and how it works. Uh, initially, you know, got some notes. Initially, loading was actually pretty easy. Uh, you pulled in, you know, you ask an Amazon uh, staff member for help. They direct you where to go. You know, there's a learning curve. It'll probably go a little faster. It took me probably longer than it did most people just to um, just to load up all of the packages. But I ended up getting a three-hour block uh, for $66. Um, there were uh, a total of about 20 packages and 19 stops. You know, um, you know, one of the things that... Uh, you got to consider when you live out in a rural area, you're not in a city is, uh, you know, you might be driving a little further to get to your first stop. For me, it was like somewhere around 23 miles to get to the first stop. And then after that, we had uh, probably 2.3, you know, 1.4 miles. It's like they, they weren't too far apart, but uh, road conditions, you know, you're going to be driving on uh, rural roads, uh, sometimes even in the city with traffic and the condition of the roads can be rough. So that's going to take a toll on your vehicle. And if I had it to do over again, I probably would have um, taken a delivery during a block that it wouldn't get dark during the block. Um, you know, because after the sun goes down, it's kind of difficult to navigate. I mean, their their app is great. It gets you really, really close. But uh, when you're trying to see an address at night, uh, most people don't have a um, uh, illumination, any kind of light. Some people do, some people don't. So... Uh, my advice to people, if you're going to get um, any kind of packages on a regular basis, it might be more trouble th to actually get light on your existing house numbers. Maybe you can get some house numbers that are temporary that you can hang under your porch light. Just hang them off the fixture so that they're easy to see uh, from the road. So if you know you're getting a delivery and there's a possibility it's going to arrive at night, go ahead and get yourself... Uh, some numbers that can be seen by the driver. You'd be doing yourself a favor and the driver. So if you're going to do it for the first time, Amazon Flex Deliver, I'd recommend you do it during the daytime. Make sure that you're doing a block that it won't get dark on you in the middle of it. You know, And um, sometimes the the app with the navigation, it said unknown road. And a lot of times that, that leads into like a trailer park or an apartment complex. You know, And, and that's on a whole different animal there. Uh, when you're dealing with apartment complexes. Trailer parks aren't horrible, but um, the apartment complexes can be because a lot of times they have security doors and you have to be able to get in. They want you to drop it off at the uh, leasing office desk or leave it with somebody. I was able to reach most of my apartments. only had a couple of them. And uh, when I was there, I eventually pressed that little help button on the app, which told me that I needed to, you know, give me lots of options. So I chose to try to contact the customer. I reached out to them in the form of text. They got back to me and they actually met me down in the lobby. So if you see that you're going to an apartment complex on your next stop, uh, you might want to go ahead and just reach out to the customer and let them know that you're on the way. That way they can possibly go down and meet you at the lobby. So it'll save you a little bit of time. And if they won't meet you at the lobby, at least they know you're coming or they can verify that they're not home to accept the delivery, especially for those later blocks that are after 5 p.m. because a lot of those uh, leasing offices are closed. You can't get inside, you know, but uh, that would be the only thing that I would uh, do differently regarding the experience. Now, as far as how much money you make, they advertise on their site that it's going to be 18 to $25 an hour, which, you know, for most people, that's a really good wage. You know, if that's what you're being paid by an employer somewhere, you drive to the job, you get that 18 to 25 dollars an hour while you're there and then you drive home and you don't have any ongoing recurring expenses but uh, my three hour block uh, paid uh, 66 dollars i had 11 miles to drive to the hub all in my notes and i had 47 loaded miles now that's a loaded mile in freight terms that's when you have the actual product in your hand and, and that three hour block took me about three hours and 15 minutes to complete and then I had 22 miles home, so I drove a total of 80 miles. But that $66 that I'll get in gross pay uh, from Amazon deposited in my account, next year they're going to send me a 1099. And that 1099 won't have any taxes taken out of it. So you're going to want to keep 
just like any other business, good records. Now, I drove 47 loaded, loaded miles, and I can deduct those miles uh, from my tax liability as an expense. And right now, for 2021, uh, the IRS is allowing uh, 56 cents per mile for operating expenses for a vehicle. You know, so that's 56 cents per mile uh, equates to $26 that I can deduct. So my taxable income, even though I may not be spending $26 right away, only $15 of that was actually in fuel. And that's the total with 80 miles driven all the way to work. That's figuring five gallons of fuel at 15 miles to the, to the gallon at $3 a gallon. So that leaves my taxable income at 40. So right off the bat, I'm gonna to wanna to take taxes out of that and hold it back, set it aside. And that's gonna be $10, 25%. I figure that's gonna be you know, pretty decent. And I've rounded all these numbers off. So my actual earnings are, is more like $30 for three hours worth of work. And then I have the commute going to and from work. So $10 per hour, um, you know, it's a little better than minimum wage. So if you don't have any skills or specific skill set, and, and the good way to ask yourself if you have a, a skill set that's marketable and, and deserves more money is if your job, um, at your job, took you two weeks to uh, train for that position, that's not really skilled labor. Uh, if, you, if it takes them two weeks to replace you, then you don't really have a skill set that's in demand and you can charge more for it. So if you're looking to make more money than that, so I recommend you go to school, acquire a skill, something that's marketable, College isn't for everybody, and I get it. And the return on investment for college isn't what it used to be. Yeah, it used to be if you had a, you couldn't even get a job without a college degree, a decent paying one, or have any type of real future or career. You know, but the return on investment is even lower. The jobs that are in demand right now are somewhere between blue collar and white collar. It's kind of like an off white or a, a light blue. You know, where it requires you to have a, a skill set that has a knowledge base and you have to actually go to work, apply your hands to a task, maybe get dirty, you might be cold, you might be hot, it doesn't matter, but that's gonna afford you a decent living. And that's gonna be somewhere in the realm of the skilled trades, you know, uh, plumbing, pipe fitting, electrical, HVAC, something along those lines. Uh, anything that is a particular skill set that you can go to the market and sell that's in demand and takes you four to five years to cultivate, then you're gonna be able to take that into the marketplace and demand more for it you know but uh, out of that $26 that you set aside for um, uh, tax deduction you know that is the uh, what they're giving you uh, $15 right out of the gate is going to replenish my fuel so at the end of the day you need to be topping off your tank so that you're ready to go first thing the next day then you can really determine how much you're actually spending in fuel and then that th that leaves $11 now you want to set that aside because it is a business you're gonna set that aside for future maintenance costs. We're talking tires, brakes, alignments, fluid changes, the things to keep your vehicle in, in top running condition because it really is a key component to your income if this is the path you're gonna choose. You know, now, Is it worth it compared to just having a regular job with Amazon? Maybe, maybe not, but I can tell you that from my research, Amazon drivers typically make right around $16 an hour. Okay, now, when you're working for yourself, you don't have any benefits, you know, but, but they probably have some sort of benefits package, 401k, health insurance that's available to them, you know, and they don't have the expense of operating a vehicle because the trucks they're driving are insured by Amazon, they're maintained by Amazon, they're fueled by Amazon, everything is, is taking care of that. And they're gonna get a W-2, which has taxes taken out of it, versus 1099. So think of it as a business. It is in fact a business. So you're gonna wanna take and set aside money for expenditures and future things that you don't really know about. The upfront and known cost is the fuel. The hidden costs are going to be, you know, the maintenance and repairs on your vehicle, you know. So what about this as a primary source of income? Uh, by itself, standalone, I, I don't think that it would work. Uh, it, it's a great way to supplement something else if you have a weekend off, a Saturday, and you're not doing anything, you're just sitting around on your laurels, uh, you know, jump in your vehicle, go out, do a block, make some money, you know. But uh, the best thing for you to do is to learn a marketable skill, go out and apply it. Eventually, you have to stop learning and start doing. So just apply that skill, you know. And it, it also begs the question, why would Amazon 
want to uh, implement something like this Amazon Flex. You know, they already have drivers. You know, they already have trucks. They got a whole fleet. I mean, are they so overwhelmed with package deliveries that they, they can't manage it, you know, with the vehicles that they have? I know they subcontract out companies that pay their drivers even less, and these companies make a little bit of profit off each person they employ. But the reason that Amazon or companies like Amazon, all the other ones out there, is because they're getting a little bit better deal when they don't have to shoulder or brunt the responsibility of insuring the vehicles, maintaining the vehicles, offering benefits packages to full-time employees, you know. So you are an independent contractor, you know, and that takes the burden of responsibility off them. It saves them money and it saves them possible future liabilities. So that's the motivation for Amazon. You know, the motivation for you, if, if it's been my assessment, I'm going to do a few more just so I can get a broader picture of the entire uh, Amazon Flex because uh, you can't judge the what an entire puzzle looks like by looking at a single piece. You have to be able to get a few more pieces to kind of put it together and, and, and keep track of your numbers so that you can figure out how much you're actually making. Um, you know, and of course, multi-apping. You know, uh, Amazon sets you up for a, a three-hour block. That's not a full work day, you know, and, and you're going to clear 30 bucks if you use these numbers as a baseline. So that's not very much money. So you might want to get yourself a block that's like later in the afternoon and in the morning, you know, you hook up with other driver apps, Uber, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub. And I'm, I haven't tried any of those yet. You know, Instacart, Personal Shopping, um, you know, and uh, Roadie. That's another one that I'm, I'm looking to try out. So, um, you know, in the future, uh, you know, you'd be looking for... Uh, future videos from me, you know, uh, you can click on the, the like and subscribe button if you want. I'd appreciate it. I'm sitting in my, uh, my, I call it my creepy van. And later I'm going to do a video on this. This is uh, actually a Bureau of Workers Comp surveillance vehicle. Uh, they owned it for 14 years. It's a 2004 Chevy Astro. And inside it's all decked out with stealth lighting, limo tent, blackout curtains, 12 volt deep cycle marine battery, 2000 watt inverter, workstations, little captain's chair in the back, you know, and it's actually really, really cool. And if, if you want to go camping in it, you pull that captain's chair out, you can set up a cot, sleeping bag, anything you want. Uh, you can go camping, stealth camping, traveling for work. There's other videos in my, uh, like how I modified a, a propane heater to stay warm here in the winter time that'll cycle off and on on thermostat. So, so check out my channel, see some of the other videos. You'll probably find it pretty interesting, especially the off grid portion. Cause I have to do things a little bit different than most, uh, to, uh, manage my way of life. But uh, first impressions on Amazon, I'm still on the fence. As a principal source of income for someone that's self-employed, typically if you're self-employed, you're gonna, you're gonna make a lot more money, especially if, if you have a skill to offer. You know, you show up for a service call with a plumbing and heating company. Somebody just recently told me, a guy was there for 15 minutes and you know, they have minimums. You know, he showed up and in 15 minutes, take a look at a, uh, a fixture and says, well, they no longer make parts for this, so I can't order it, I can't fix it. I'm done here, signed here, that'll be $90. And the guy was there for 15 minutes, but they do have uh, minimums on service calls. So if you're looking to be self-employed and you want that flexibility, you know, learn that skill. It's gonna take a higher upfront cost. Obviously you can do Amazon on a very shoestring style budget. So, um, so you know, I hope this video helps you to have some clarity of thought regarding whether or not this is for you uh, I'm still on the fence. I still see it as a side gig. It's not going to be a primary hustle. They call it side hustles. So um, anyway, I'm going to conclude the video. Y'all have a great day. Really appreciate you.